What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the fifth studio album by the Scottish band Franz Ferdinand. It's titled Always Ascending, Always Going Upwards. And this, yes, is a step up from their last material, which was actually still good. Now, if you're not super familiar with this band, you've probably heard some of the hits off of their first two records, everything from The Fallen to obviously Take Me Out, but you might not know some of the stuff in between. I do think their only real slip was on Tonight, Franz Ferdinand. That's the only album that I'm not that keen on. It just tried a little bit too hard, a little bit more dramatic with some more storytelling elements that didn't always pan out. But after that, they moved into right thoughts, right words, right action. And that one was actually really, really solid. Some of those tracks just really sat with me over time, like Evil Eye and many of the other tracks. And it went beyond the singles on a listen like that. It was disco infused, but I think this new record is even more in that direction. And a lot of that you can thank their new keyboardist Julian for. He's actually known for being a producer, but after Nick McCarthy, the original founding guitarist, left this band, they added two new members. But Julian's actually the only one that contributed to this album and its creative process. In between studio albums as Franz Ferdinand, they actually made one as a collaborative effort with the band Sparks, FFS, Franz Ferdinand plus Sparks. Makes sense. Easy title. That record was actually damn solid, and I'm kind of kicking myself for not giving it more attention earlier, but hey, it's on the radar now, and if you never heard that one, please check that out even before going into Always Ascending. I'm actually very, very pleased with the results that we get on Always Ascending. Five albums in, a lot of bands these days, especially ones in the alternative world, seem to be struggling to find their groove, their relevancy, and their grasping at straws, but Franz Ferdinand actually feel more confident and there's kind of an honest swagger about these tracks as they strut about with those riffs that you're going to instantly know. Despite that not being the same guitarist all the time, obviously Alex, the lead singer, has stepped in and played some of the guitars as well, but I think that you instantly know that it's Franz Ferdinand. But they've updated a few things. They've fine-tuned it. The lyrics are much more biting in places, but also playful and fun. And this record in general is just a blast to listen to. It's so much fun as you get through these disco dip tunes. And I know if you hear disco, you're like, ah, it's being done to death, this whole retro vibe thing. Trust me, give it a chance. Don't say anything until you've heard it in full. While I do prefer the radio edit, I have to give more praise to Always Ascending, the title song here. This one has everything from the synthesizers being on point to backing vocals, the chorus, the sporadic drums, and those peppy riffs that really set the mood for this album in general. And that's one thing I have to praise. They don't sound exactly alike, but the guitars are so in tune all throughout this record, and you know that you're still in the same album because they're not trying to jump all over the place in terms of its tone, and that's why this record is so easy to listen to from start to finish. Whereas on their last studio album as Franz Ferdinand, I felt like it slipped in places in terms of its consistency and its ability to hold your attention at all times, I really don't feel that on this one. There's a couple of tracks that I find to be a bit weaker, but for the most part, these are absolute jams that floor me in places, and even if they're not taking me by surprise, they're still holding my attention and have me snapping my fingers, bobbing my head, and at times just wanting to get up and dance. And one of those big danceable moments comes in the form of the second single from this project, Feel the Love Go. This one has a captivating synth wave of energy, especially at the end. They add in some brass, and it is a party. It's on, and you just want to vibe out. And what I really appreciate about Franz Ferdinand in general is just the fact that they're sticking with the instruments. You can tell that they put a lot of work into the bass lines, the meticulous guitars, the drum patterns even. Even if they're kind of simple and disco dipped, I keep saying disco dipped, I'm sorry. Even if they are a bit simple with the whole disco tinged thing, you're not necessarily looking for the most creative drum pattern in the world. You're looking for something to keep the song flowing and they do bring that. And that's not to say that every drum rhythm here is very simple. It just, in a couple of places, it can get a little bit simple, but they definitely make up for it. Huck and Gem feels like a drinking song in a way, just an anthem and it punches hard. It feels like a little bit of politics, a little bit of discussion, a little bit of 
angst and it's all there pressing this song and that chorus sticks like glue. Then you've got something like Lois Lane which feels kind of empowering in a way and I like the fact that they're just kind of addressing the whole singles club after 30. That's something that comes up towards the end of the song as the instrumental just gets to the top notch. I really love the way that this song goes out on such a fiery note and they're not afraid to push the catchy angle in the sense that they have the instrumentation there, they have the vocals, they have the lyrical content. It's all on point and this song is a ton of fun. Then you have Paper Cages. That one in particular really strikes a chord with me because it talks about people feeling trapped, but really the paper cages around us are the things that we think that we can't do. And this one gives you a blast of energy to knock down those walls and to get out there and actually do something. Another great chorus on this record, and that's followed immediately after by another one that I am really, really drawn to. It's called Finally. It might not be a top favorite for me, but I really like the storytelling angle on this one. And it makes me think, I'm like, who is Alex talking about on this track? Because he's talking about finally being with the people that he's meant to be with, whether it be family, new band members, creative flow between the new band members. Exactly what he's talking about remains unknown, at least as of now. But that's the thing I like about listening to Franz Ferdinand's music. It's something where a lot of the time, the lyrical content is kind of hard to decipher and you just find yourself focusing on the music and I don't like to read into it too too much it's just something where if you do that sometimes you can suck the life out of it a perfect example of when the bass groove really gets flowing on this record is lazy boy the second song this one starts off slower and it kind of has this sexy suave vibe like it's worn with a sinister grin in a way and I like that feeling it has this synth aura that you just kind of float into and it's got this meticulously crafted bass line that just slowly starts pumping in there before adding in the guitar rhythm and once that chorus comes around you know you're ready to move your body. I could say similar things for Glimpse of Love despite that one being one of my least favorites in terms of the overall like a song itself like the lyrical content. I like the music of that song so much though that it kind of outweighs it. I love the guitars on there. You know exactly what I'm talking about if I talk about those fast paced guitars, those riffs that feel a little bit chirpy like they're just all over the place and it's very Franz Ferdinand. I think that that right there just sets them apart from their peers because of the fact that you listen to their music and you almost instantly know who it is. Even if you played me the instrumental of that, I would say that's Franz Ferdinand. Always Ascending never hits that lull that you expect it to. You start off the album and you're liking it, but you think, okay, this could go one of two ways. It could overdo itself or they could find a way to make this work. And I think there's a lot of credit in the production and obviously the skill and craftsmanship that went into pinning these songs, making them different, just different enough to stand out from each other, but they still feel very connected. I credit a lot of the songs in the middle of the album, like the Academy Award, Lois Lane, and even Huck and Jim, because they do mix things up. You've got in there, you've got a slower moment, you've got one that's a lot of fun, and then you have a more hard hitting aggressive tune, and that just adds a lot of variety to this album. Even the closing moment, I have to give a lot of credit to that song because it's kind of beautiful. It's a charming send off and the last like three minutes of this track purely instrumental and it doesn't change that much but you don't get tired of it for some reason at least I don't this moment here it floats and the way that he sings the chorus so passionately slow don't kill me slow don't kill me it's just super catchy and then you just find yourself reflecting on the whole album that you just listened to in that instrumental outro slow don't kill me slow wraps up a great album and I'm very very happy with always ascending this is definitely going down as one of my favorite albums from Franz Ferdinand, but I want to know, what do you guys think? I think the album is definitely worth listening to. In fact, I love this thing. Can't wait to buy it. I am going to rate this a 4.5. I hope you guys enjoyed the review today. If you did, please leave a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. And other than that, yeah. Here's the outro. I know there's a lot of releases coming out in the world of alternative and indie music this week, so I will try to get to as many of those as I can. If you're able to, please support me on Patreon. You can pledge right over here at this annotation on the corner of the screen, another Franz Ferdinand review right over here, or another recent album review right over here. Socials in the description, and I'll see you soon on ARTV.